the 29th, the 29th of January, 2012. And I'm using audioboot.fm and youtube.com to talk about the Sunday Business Post with a short call out to Sean Sherlock, a special, yes, um, special call out to Sean Sherlock. TD, who's concerned about the Irish version of SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act. Now, Sean's a good man, and he knows that it's not properly the SOPA that Adrian Weckler in the Sunday Business Post makes it. But hold the thought. First thing I want to do is, Sean, if you're listening, if you're listening over here to audioboo.fm, or if you're watching youtube.com stroke talk world, you should come to an event Tuesday evening, meet up with Connor Pierce from Nokia, and talk about the windows of opportunity that you're slamming shut if the legislation you think is best for Ireland passes. And what will happen in Eli in the evening of uh, Tuesday next week, uh, Tuesday next, which should be about the 31st of January. So Connor's having a, a short get-together to talk about the Windows Phone 7 in the Nokia lineup. So it'll be this phone over here. And this little device could do some cool stuff that will be constrained in the future by some constraints that the Irish anti-piracy laws will bring into effect. And at this event, there'll be people who understand what's going on. Now, what Connor's doing is have a look at the things that uh, Nokia needs to do to get back the hearts and minds of retail and salespeople, to get back the customers, perhaps through a price plan. It's really beneficial. I mean, my wife received a text from Vodafone saying she qualifies for that Lumia 800 if she just shows up and signs a contract for free. So good, good phone, a good event. Now, what will happen is Adrian may be there as well. And what Adrian's doing in the technology section of the business post is he's, he's giving issues their fair airing, and he reduces it to 10-point guide to the Irish SOPA law. Two points I'd like to make. Three points, actually. Under point number six, talking about the amendments to the law that Ireland's proposing, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to cut off Internet users' access to websites if you're a rights holder and potentially order search engines to remove links from the search engines. He also points out that tech companies would be affected by this because the big deal is this. I train people to use the Internet without file sharing. Well, actually, with file sharing legal, but without hoovering stuff off BitTorrent or Pirate Bay. And these guys need, these digital developers need the content that they get on the Internet. They become startups later on. They earn the state money. They all do it legally, but if you have this really difficult restriction in place, some of the stuff they may do could actually get constrained, could actually be blocked. Their internet access could be cut off under a court ruling against somebody who's on their same blade server. It's a bit technical. So, Sean, 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 if you're listening, people like Adrian can explain this to you face to face. I'm sure he's done it already. Connor Pierce can show you how that fits into the to the ecosystem, and there will be some tech journals there Tuesday evening where you can talk face-to-face. -face. Proportionally, some of those tech journalists represent the startup culture in Ireland, so they're reporting on the combined digital startups and related multinationals in Ireland, which puts Ireland in a position of having the highest concentration of such energy of any other country in Europe. Finally, Adrian points out how you can solve music and video piracy. And he points out there's two real quick solutions, two switches on or off. Literally, shut off the internet, and you're going to have all kinds of piracy uh, problems go away. Or provide new ways through that on switch for legal file sharing uh, systems. Craig Davis cited in Adrian's article, Vice President of Urban Promotions for EMI Records, points out that if you embrace things like Spotify, Pandora, Netflix, Hulu, you find out that you're going to get people liking music and buying it online and perhaps even going to concerts where they buy tickets for the concerts and merchandise. Pointing out, people don't know, they no longer buy CDs or DVDs. They want this stuff streaming to them conveniently. But what's happening in Ireland is plenty of time being spent on court rulings and going after customers, not actually encouraging some form of legal system to solve the problem. So that's all I have. Sean Sherlock, I'm sure you're not listening, but if you were, Adrian's got a really good 10-point guide to the 
technology constraints you're going to put into place, the toxic kind of things you're going to, you're going to crank into law. And uh, here's a, a cautionary warning that, you know, even if your law does pass, what's going to happen is uh, there will probably be a court uh, ruling against somebody. The court will grant an injunction against a big brand like Facebook, Twitter, or Google, preventing tens of thousands of unlawful covered uh, clips from perhaps being viewed, but shutting down those websites in Ireland, which would leave the Irish government in a position of having to counter or counteract that court judgment, while at the same time pleading with all technology startups around the world that Ireland is a country you can trust with your technology and with your digital culture. Okay, I'll see you later on twitter.com stroke top gold. It's me on my phone looking at it. And um, you can catch me up, catch up to me on www.insideview.ie where this item I just babbled about will appear as a blog post. Bernie Goldbach, Rainy Selbridge County, Kildare, Ireland, San. Thanks for listening and bye for now.